Write each expression as a single trig ratio, then evaluate when possible. So like I said with your other identities, you're going to want to memorize them all, or mostly memorize them all. They're on your formula sheet, so you can always verify if you've memorized them correctly as a check. But the reason you need to memorize them is so that when you get to a question like this, and you see cos squared minus sine squared, and the angles are the same, you say, that's one of my identities. Instead of going, hmm, I wonder how I'm going to solve this. So you need to be able to recognize things, and you're not going to, on every single question, read the question and then go through all your formulas on your formula sheet. It's going to take too long. So there is an expectation that you are able to recognize things, and the one that you need to recognize here is the fact oops, that cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is equal to cos 2 theta. Okay? You don't want to get this one mixed up with cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, because what's that always equal to? That's always equal to 1. So in this case, that means I can rewrite this as cos of 2 times theta. Well, theta here is pi over 4. If I reduce that, I get cos of pi over 2. And from your unit circle, cos is the x-coordinate at 90 degrees. What's your x-coordinate going to be? That's not to say that this one could not have been done using just your unit circle from the beginning, right? What is cos of pi over 4 from your unit circle? Square root of 2 over 2. And so this would be square root of 2 over 2 squared minus sine is also square root of 2 over 2 squared, and you subtract them, and you get 0 as well. So you might say, Mr. JR, you know what? I think it's easier to just use my unit circle directly in the blue. For me, that makes sense, and that would be quicker. They both take about the same amount of writing space, and you both get the same answer right away. Now in B, So in B, if we recognize that we've got 2 tan pi over 6 over 1 minus tan squared of pi over 6, that this matches up perfectly with the double angle formula for tan. So I'll write out the double angle formula for tan right here. Tan 2 theta is equal to 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. Well, does it match up perfectly? We've got the 2 tan theta on the top, but the bottom doesn't match up, right? We need a 1 minus tan squared. They have tan squared minus 1. What could we do with that? Well, to make it match up, so I'm going to rewrite it 2 tan pi over 6. I could factor a negative out of the bottom. And then it kind of matches up, but I've got an extra negative on the bottom. Anytime you have a negative factored out on the bottom of your fraction or a negative factored out of the top of your fraction, that's the same thing as the whole thing being negative. You aware of that? Negative 3 over 4 is the same as... 3 over negative 4 is the same as negative 3 over 4. Those are all different ways of expressing, expressing a fraction as negative. So if, as soon as I factor that negative out of the bottom, I could write that as a negative out in front. And then this becomes negative 
that whole thing matches up with our formula. 2 times pi over 6, which is negative tan of pi over 3. Tan of pi over 3 from your pi plate, from your unit circle, is just root 3. Okay, so we now have to decide, was this a better method than just going to our unit circle from the beginning? Because we had to we had to manipulate it to make it match the formula. So that took some effort, but then the actual calculation in the end was really easy. If we decided, and I'll do it in blue again, to write from the beginning, calculate things, and then simplify it, is that going to be easier? Because we know pi over 6 for tan. Pi over 6 for tan is root 3 over 3. So this is how it would start. It also isn't very pretty, because we've got fractions in the top and fractions in the bottom. But with all of your proofs, I think you're probably getting pretty good at your fraction work. What are we going to have to do? We're going to have to get a single fraction on the top. Well, that's going to be 2 root 3 over 3. Draw a nice long line there for the bottom. How am I going to get a single fraction on the bottom? Well, this is going to be so when I square 3 over 9 minus 1. So if I want to get a single fraction on the bottom, I'm going to need a common denominator. Are you okay with me changing that to 1 third? Minus 3 over 3. And so now on the top, we have 2 root 3 over 3. On the bottom, you'll have negative 2 thirds. A fraction divided by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Your 3's are going to simplify, your 2's are going to simplify, you're left with a negative root 3. Exactly the same as what we found with the other one. So comparing the two, they both take about the same amount of work. One is working with fractions, the other is manipulating to make sure the formula works. So maybe they're about equal amounts of work. I'm going to add a part C to this one. And this is more of the places where you'll find your double angles appearing on the exam. I want you to evaluate And this is a good question because you know how we sort of, we name things, we get used to certain types of questions, and that helps trigger, oh yeah, that's how I'm going to do this question. This is a good question because I'm hoping in here there's two different triggers that can go off in your mind when you're looking at this question. One of the triggers should be when you see the pi over 12 because we did a whole bunch of questions on how to solve for pi over 12 question. And so since there's pi over 12, you might think, oh, I want to solve for a pi over 12. Now normally, if I just gave you one of these, like cos of pi over 12 to solve on an exam, that's like a three or four mark question. So you have a three mark question just in cos of pi over 12, another three mark question in sine of pi over 12, and then putting that all together and simplifying, this would probably be if it was supposed to be a pi over 12 question, it should be out of seven marks. That's a lot of marks. But if this question showed up on your exam, it would be a two mark question. Because they're hoping you see the other trigger other than the pi over 12 question. Two sine theta cos theta is one of our identities. On your formula sheet, 
you have that sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. And so if you recognize that trigger, then you could rewrite this as equal to sine of 2, and theta would be pi over 12. And that reduces to sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half. A lot easier than the pi over 12 method, right? And you can see why it's a two mark question instead of a seven mark question. If you wanted to do it with the pi over 12 and get a root 6 plus root 2 all over 4 and another one over here and then multiply it by 2, it'll simplify to be a half as well. But that would be a lot more work. So what we find in these questions that if they really want you to use your identity rather than just solve for it directly like we did in blue, then they will choose an angle here that you don't have on your pi plate. For example, a very common one, pi over 8. Pi over 8 you've never heard of before. It's not on our pi plate. It's not a pi over 12 question. Can't do anything with pi over 8 without our calculator. But if we had this here and we used our double angle formula and this is an 8 instead, 2 times pi over 8 reduces to pi over 4. And then you would be able to solve. OK, questions you can do for this one are four, five, and six, and I'll give you some time for those now.